really inspired to come here and do something completely different than what I was asked to do. After seeing a movie called Woman Walks Ahead, that's a, it's a new release. I don't know if anyone in this room has seen it. Please show me your hands if you've seen it. Okay. Uh, after I saw that, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> we need to do something. You guys are our next generation of filmmakers. We have to talk to you guys and try to inspire you uh, in a completely different way. Okay. So I wanted to bring you the most accomplished, uh, uh, our highest esteemed actor in, in Indian country, all from the whole planet, which is West Duty. So West Duty, come on up, please. Wes and I go way, way, way back from the beginning of the Indian Registry in Hollywood, ran by Bonnie, and uh, yeah, our careers totally took different paths. We've worked, been able to work together, and I would love to be able to work together again uh, with awesome characters and scripts, which we hope to inspire you to do after this. We're going to show you a clip of Wes Duty's work. Go ahead. Lights, please. Sound. They assured me. Yeah. Volume. It's the kind of film you can think of. He's played the airplane, he's played, you know, his character in Mystery Men, like really different characters thinking outside the box. Not the traditional, stereotypical, stoic, leathers and feathers role like we saw in Woman Walks Ahead, which was unbelievable that in 2018 we're still making those movies, okay? So we want to inspire you to think outside the box. We've got so much to draw from as Native Americans with, you know, star people, like all of our culture and everything to create good characters so Wes can continue on playing awesome characters but written by Natives. So I'd like to uh, ask Wes if he could share with you his favorite roles that he's ever played and why. Please, Wes. Favorite characters that I've played over the years, um, <clears throat> not to downplay any of the others, but I, I especially enjoyed doing uh, Mystery Men. Anyone aware of Mystery Men? That was a, a step outside the box to a certain extent. I did continue to have long hair. It was fashion very fashionably <laughs> but, but uh, yeah that was uh, that was a lot of fun to do uh, well mainly in that uh, uh, I wasn't necessarily playing uh, a Native American but if anybody looks up there who do they see they see Wes Studi that's they know he's Native American right okay it's great to uh, be able to identify with uh, someone on screen I, I know that from uh, from having watched films throughout my younger life. Uh, but uh, one of the things about it was that it had uh, different kinds of dialogue. Uh, given most of them, most of my, uh, my dialogue came straight from uh, uh, fortune cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Stoic Indian. <laughs> But yeah, that was uh, that, that was one of them that I enjoyed doing. But uh, uh, then uh, there was also uh, uh, the uh, character in Avatar, which was, in a way, a step forward, as well as a standing in place in a way, because you all understand that yeah, this was a Western up in. Uh, uh, outer space or wherever Pandora uh, is. Uh, but uh, uh, I usually like to think of uh, roles in terms of what's coming up, right? So this is my outfit for my audition for, what do you think? 
guesses? Anyone guesses? What Come do you on. Think? Yellowstone. <laughs> Anybody aware of Yellowstone? Please show your hands. Okay. <laughs> wow. I just want to see you guys are awake. You guys got to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask what doing what, but I. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> huh. Yeah, so thinking that, outside the box. That was your favorite mystery man. Well, yeah. yeah, okay. Awesome. Okay, my favorite is the next one I'll do. You know? Yeah. That's, that's essentially it. That um, maybe you will write, hopefully. And when I speak about leathers and feathers roles, I mean, the roles, um, you know, that Dances with Wolves. Um, Graham Greene and Wes Studi's roles were absolutely amazing. They completely changed the attitude about who Nate They did a brilliant job in the development of those characters and the portrayal and delivery. So, though, you know, if you're going to do that, just the period pieces, please make awesome, interesting, compelling characters that have multi-dimension to them, you know? Not the ones that, you know, once in a while we see a brilliant character and then we see those mundane like the ones in Woman Walks Ahead you know just like keep mo we got to keep moving forward and keep expanding our creativity and offering the world awesome native content with native roles you know um, filmmakers these are, are yeah you, are you are, <coughs> who are is, what is do this you guys a room do? full of filmmakers writers we have three writers Four, Animator. five, six. Cool. Writers. Animation is a perfect Anim platform to be hyper-creative. Mm. That's awesome. Great. Yay! Well, I, you know what I would like to see one of you do, one of you six writers in here, is can you write a story that is based on uh, Hamlet? And place it uh, somewhere in uh, in in the USA, uh, either uh, in an urban area or or in the Indian country somewhere. Is anyone familiar with the story in Hamlet? Awesome. Yeah. Do you think you could do that? <laughs> yeah, adapt it. That's, that's sort of out, out of the box, but not totally out of the box, because that's what everybody else in the world has been doing, is taking these kinds of stories and, and updating them over the years, right? Into, mm -hmm. And putting them in other kinds of, uh, in other kinds of situations. Uh, and uh, while you're doing it, I want to play Iago before I get too old. <laughs> so it's got, this has to be done within the next six years. That's Is that when agreeable? I plan to retire. Awesome. <laughs> Did anybody in here watch the Oscars this year? So, the biggest highlight in the whole history of my career, of that American Academy kind of award thing, was seeing Wes Studi on there. Second native ever to be on that show. The first one was not invited by the Oscars. It was Sasheen, who was there for Marlon Brando. Totally surprised. The Academy and came on in a protest way. So this was an invitation, the very first Native American in the history of filmmaking invited to come on the stage and share the space with A-list people, with Wes. And it was amazing doing a tribute to the veterans and, you know, being a former vet and spoke on his experience and then spoke in Cherokee, which was like a coup for, you know, filmmakers everywhere. So it was so exciting to see that. So if we can continue to write content, that's awesome. I hope that because Wes already broke the stage there with his presence, that we can continue a flow of people on that stage. So we have to continuously in, in, increase our quality and our content so that we can continue to have people on that stage where Wes was. You know, he, he set the stage for us, so the expectation is there for us to continue that. You know, um, go ahead. We're, I think it's ready. It's not. Okay. You're doing great, though. 
Oh. <laughs> but we had it set up a certain way, and so it's all backwards now, but that's okay. It's just, yeah, this was going to be all set and ready. Did about 15 different checks on it, huh? But anyway, um, so now I want to open it up to the floor. You can ask Wes any question you want. It can be about film or anything. Go ahead. Let's keep it clean. <laughs> uh, go ahead, the guy in the back first. So, have you worked with uh, Kevin? I mean, aside from Yellowstone and Dances with Wolves, have you done any other work with Kevin Costner? Have I worked with Kevin Costner other than Dances with Wolves? No, I said I'm auditioning. Can you hear me back there? This was this outfit was uh, this his is my, audition. This outfit. is my uh, Yellowstone audition <coughs> outfit. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't done any Yellowstone. Uh, Devlin has. <coughs> Devlin has in stunts. No, uh, no, I ha only dances with woods. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Eugene. Why who's your influence? Who, who was your influence in the beginning? This guy named Eugene Brave Rock. <laughs> <laughs> he was in his papers. He paid him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he pays well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, influences. Influences. I, I like to think that uh, uh, every actor that I've seen do uh, marvelous things in terms of, if they can grab my attention and I will really want to watch them do something, uh, I, I usually try to incorporate a little bit of whatever it is that they do that makes them interesting, if I can put my finger on it. You know, it's not always easy to, to uh, define exactly what it is that, that they do that, uh, that that interests you, that makes you want to sit there and watch this person? Is it something that you, uh, is it like you empathize with the character or you see their situation, you sympathize with what they're doing or their situation, whatever? Uh, so what I do is whenever I find a character like that that is interesting, I steal a little bit from them as much as I can or I try to reinterpret what they're doing as I see it. Um, and as, what, as far as absolute individuals who have, uh, uh, that have influenced me, uh, I think probably the most would have been the late Will Sampson and uh, mm. Chief Dan George, who, uh, who were on screen way before I was. And, uh, that, you know, they, that they kind of opened doors in a way for some people in, uh, in the industry wherein they said, well, we can, look, we, we, we can actually find some Indians here who can, you know, deliver on screen. And they kind of quickly forgot about it after the, what, 80s or thereabouts? They kind of forgot about it for a while until later on a number of other uh, Indians came along like Graham Greene uh, and uh, uh, others uh, and uh, re-interested uh, producers and studios, uh, networks into looking for real uh, native talent. And uh, well, that's, that, that's kind of unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it always has been to this point. What I see changing now is the fact that you guys are sitting here thinking to yourselves that, oh yes, I want to be a filmmaker. I can be a filmmaker. I can actually put something together and make it work and hopefully make it to a real uh, national screen. Now that's one thing that we haven't quite done yet. Now we, we can go back and talk about uh, smoke signals. You know, that was probably one of the uh, first, well, it was it maybe was. the first film to hit uh, national distribution here in the States. And uh, since then, it's been kind of quiet. Uh, the thing about uh, that show was that 
The only thing missing from that show is the fact that it wasn't totally financed by natives. One of the big things that you'll find in the financial world uh, amongst natives is that they're very, very reticent to step off into that. So it's very hard to find any kind of funding, any kind of help from uh, other natives in terms of uh, putting together and actually dis distrib distributing a film. Now, now Georgie has found a way uh, a few years ago uh, and the trend began to work in that direction but it has, we really haven't gotten to the point where we can get into major distribution at this point. And so that's kind of on you guys. Uh, we can only do so much. People of my generation in any case. So, he's trying to stop me from rambling here. Uh, <laughs> Do you ever look at producing or directing in the future? Uh, I, yes. I have looked at, uh, looked at uh, directing and uh, as well as producing, and I have done both. Uh, and that's why I say it can be pretty darn difficult, but I love the directing. Love the directing. You have something? Yeah, I do. What was it that... Uh, when in your life did you know that this is what you wanted to do? And what was it that let you know that? What, uh, what uh, let me know that was uh, I, I took a good look at myself and I said, I really can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I was of a competent age, and uh, now really, uh, what happened was I I, uh, I found a uh, I found a vehicle to uh, that served that served my purpose, which was which was at at uh, which was something that I had never really considered until I walked into uh, a classroom of uh, uh, community theater, people who were doing community theater. They, uh, I, I was looking for something else to do in life and I found community theater and it's one of the scariest things in the world I found to uh, jump up on a stage and do a play, to uh, become a part of something bigger than yourself and and be a really important part of something larger than yourself that uh, that no matter how large or how small your part may be in any given uh, play, in any given film program is that if, you, if you're not there, it doesn't work. You're a cog in a much larger machine that is, that is uh, telling a story. And if you're not there and you don't perform your function, you cripple it. You know, so that in itself is like you have so many people depending on you. And you're also depending on yourself to be able to do it. And that was something that I felt like was something very rewarding and and it also served the purpose of uh, getting me so scared to the point of adrenaline flowing everywhere and I have this object to overcome this this wall of fear to overcome that I I love the process of overcoming the fear and that is pretty much, in a nutshell, that's it. That's it. You have to yeah. be 100% present when you do theater. There's no second take, third take, oh, you know what, I didn't feel that, so let's do another 16 takes. There's none of that. You have to be so present, and you're a part of a machine, 
So it's just, it, it is an adrenaline rush. I come from theater and it's the best way to prepare yourself for anything because the discipline is so much more severe than it is in film. You know, film, if you start out with film and TV, it makes, it creates lazy actors. I'm, telling, I'm just coming from a professional acting background. That's, I've seen a lot of laziness there where people are just reading their lines for the first time in the makeup chair. It's like, oh my God, really? You're just, yeah, can you run these lines with me? And you, you could tell they just, that was the first day they're trying to practice. So that's, yeah. Theater really teaches you how to be a pro. So it's awesome. And I recommend anyone who wants to become an actor to take theater classes. Learn how to be present in the moment and develop characters, really multi-dimensioned characters that are interesting and compelling, you know? So uh, apparently our tech is set up now. So we're going to show you the sh reel on Wes, okay? Lights. Oh. It's still now. It's still now. This is at max, so. It's a max? No, the speakers are all the so. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> Anticipation, there you go. Fine. Find him. 
We must slaughter anyone who stands in our way. If we cannot save our son, a terrible end awaits us. All of us. Beast will feed. The darkness will overcome the earth. And all our days will come to an end. Only Ethan can save us. Oh, tell me. Ah, uh, yes. We're well <laughs> under new costumes, my friends. But we need care for what is outside. What is inside? Cares for you. But the clock is ticking here. Are we going to sew dresses all day or are we going to rescue a baby? I need a thimble. Anybody? Patience, my son. To summon your power for the conflicts to come, you must first have power over that which will catch you. <laughs> you want to push something down, you have to pull it up. If you want to go left, you have to go right. Your temper is very quick, my friend. But until you learn to master your rage, your rage will become your master. <laughs> right? Right? Not necessary. Lights. That's cool. Thanks, West Duty, for thinking outside the box. <laughs> so um, thank you also to, to Devlin. He strung these all together for me so that we could do this presentation. So thank you, Devlin. Yay! Devlin. Yay. So this, this presentation was created to show you the diversity that an actor can play. You know, so when, when people are going, ah, the, you know, the, I can't quite picture that. It's like a professional actor can transform into anything, anybody. He plays different ages and different, you know, all different kinds of tribes. So just think outside the box. Open your mind and your creativity and your imagination. Go into your email and grab that. So, um, does anybody want to respond to anything that they saw on the screen? Anybody got a question? Yes, sir. Uh, of all your roles, if you have at one time like an all-time favorite role, and what would be your dream role? Something you haven't ever played? Someone or someone you haven't ever played? Those are the questions. I think we already covered that. The dream role, yeah. No. His I'm favorite role kidding. was Mr. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, a role you'd like to play was an answer. Uh, a role that I'd like to play? Um, I'd like to do the producers. The Mel Brooks joint? Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. And I, I think I'd like to be a Zero Mostel character. Anybody else got questions? Yeah. Yeah, in Avatar, you're able to work with James Cameron. Um, is, 
Uh, in Avatar, you're able to work with James Cameron. Is there another director you would like to work with in Hollywood? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, I, I have uh, a number of favorite uh, uh, directors. I've always, I love to work with Michael Mann. Uh, and uh, Walter Hill is also very good. Uh, big crop of uh, wonderful new a uh, directors coming along that uh, um, it, uh, the problem is you can't always, uh, you know, stay with the same people, working with the same people. I think Scott Cooper is a very good director as well. Um, and uh, there's always, uh, just like the, uh, the, uh, the job of being an actor is always a turnover and uh, new directors uh, coming along. And one of my favorite directors I ever worked for was Georgina. Oh. Georgina oh. Lightning. Uh, Thank you. Older than America. Has anyone seen that? Show of hands. Two people in the room. Uh, oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that counts. Well, yeah, that, that counts. counts. Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, uh, all right. Yes, sir. Uh, um, why was I just looking at your versatility as an actor. Uh, what are some of the, the cool things that you got to do in those parts? Like uh, when you were in Street Fighter, did you have to beef up your fighting skills? and? Just uh, different things like that you have to be proposed. Oh yeah, Street Fighter. Um, yeah, that uh, one of the highlights of that uh, whole experience was uh, we got to work and train with Benny the Jet. Anybody know who that is? <laughs> you don't know Benny the Jet? Okay. Well, it, Benny the Jet is uh, one of the uh, absolute uh, pioneers and, and uh, champions of uh, uh, like Thai kickboxing, as well as a trainer and a fighter here in the States uh, it, up, up until the uh, about 80s, thereabouts. And he's one of those guys that they, they like Rocky took all of the things that, uh, that uh, uh, Benny used to do in terms of training because he's a young, uh, poor Hispanic boy who didn't have gyms and things like that to work in. And he comes up with all of these dragging uh, big tires around and, and uh, the uh, old uh, uh, inner tube tires training with all kinds of things like that and uh, came up with a, a number of, uh, of uh, ways to train like that as well as it became one of the uh, premier uh, kickboxing champs uh, throughout the uh, United States as well as the world. Then he became a, a trainer and uh, a coach for uh, uh, a lot of the martial artists uh, that you see uh, uh, in, in, uh, in films since that time. Uh, but in any case, that was one of the great highlights of working with him as well as you know Jean-Claude Van Damme? Jean-Claude Van Damme in that particular uh, film has this uh, scene wherein he's, uh, he, he, his uh, uh, armored personnel carrier breaks through this great big wall where there was a fight going on inside and it's an illegal fight some, for some reason or other. But he comes blasting through uh, a wall in his APC, and the top comes off the, uh, the the hatch of this APC. He pops up there, and he looks all around like that, and he says, "You're all undressed." <laughs> <laughs> and most of these people, extras, were uh, uh, Thai, but then almost immediately they all <laughs> they start whispering amongst themselves. Then they crack up. The whole big room of people, Thai people, start cracking up. But his line was actually, you're all under arrest. <laughs> That's what I remember most. <laughs> um, so one of the things they want me to do for you guys is talk about what project I'm working on now. Um, so we're going to show you uh, the concept proof of uh, teaser right now.
Lights, please. Thank you. What's going on now? Huh? Oh, the signal. Oh. Alrighty. Well, it's called this, uh, The Secret History of the Wild West. So it's 13 characters. It's a TV series. Each episode covers a different a legendary character, a Native American. So it's 13 characters we're going to be covering from Chief Big Bear, Louis Riel, you know, uh, people who shaped Canada. And then they're going to go into women the next season and then people from North, Natives from North America and just keep expanding on that. Um, and this is a live action. So there's going to be, you know, gunfights and train robbery and spirituality, mystic stuff, all kinds of special effects. Uh, so it's, it's a game changer for me in my career, and uh, I'm very excited about that. We're trying to work on um, some of the international signatory for the unions uh, thing right now so that we can get Wes um, to play one of those characters. So they, out of the 13 episodes, I get to direct five. And I went to the meeting last week with my wish list and got every one that I wanted. So next year, I will bring an episode for you guys to watch. Okay? Thank you. I think we're closing it. Has anybody got any questions? Yes? This uh, question is for both of you. Um, as you've sought to play a, a variety of roles in the breakout of stereotypes from Native people, have you ever been in a situation where you're playing a character and felt like this character is behaving or thinking in a way that no given person I've ever met would behave or think? And if so, how did you handle that? Uh, well, I think uh, that first of all, you have to uh, assess the situation in terms of the kind of story that you're telling and how it relates to the character you agreed to play. Uh, there, are, there are times when your own personal uh, uh, concerns, your own uh, uh, ideas and attitudes may not uh, uh, coalesce with the character that you're playing. But if you're an actor, you, you, uh, you have to work with that. Now, the, the, there are instances wherein perhaps a, uh, a situation can be made better if you come up with an idea that, well, this particular person uh, would do or say something uh, in the script, uh, and if you disagree with it, well, you should have thought of that before you agreed to take the job. But if you can see a uh, way to make it better, then uh, surely you throw your idea into uh, uh, with the director and whoever else is concerned and, uh, and work from there. But uh, one thing you do have to remember is that you're telling somebody else's story. and. Uh, your own personal uh, values uh, shouldn't be able to interfere with, with, with telling a story. Well said. I come from the theater training, so in theater, the script is the Bible. Like, you don't question that. That's the, right, the writer rewrote that a billion times because they're very disciplined and they, every word is figured out and there's no throwaways. It's like you have to honor what they've written. Perfect example on West Wing. The writer, Aaron Sorkin, who writes this, these scripts, is so meticulous about his, the dialogue. I went in and I, had, I was doing a audition with and then they did callbacks and you have to read with partners. So Steve Rivas and I were reading the roles that Gary Farmer got. And then, um, you know, I improv a little bit. And so um, 
when they called me and said, we booked you, but you have to stay word for word. word. I said, no problem. It's just I was trying to recover. You know, in theater, you learn on the stage, though, to recover somebody to help them out. So you, only with improv, if you're helping the other actor to keep the, pat, the, the show going. So I said, no problem. But on the day of shooting, Gary Farmer said, can we change one word? So it was... We will still be, so we, we will then be sovereign. We will still be sovereign. He wanted then change to still, one word. And it was like, shut everything down. They had to get every, like have a meeting about it and everything just to change one word. I mean, so it depends on where you're at, but really you have to respect, yes, like Wes said, you read the script, you accepted. That's what you accepted to play. And I'm not, you know, he's not a raper or a killer, but what if you got that role? You have to do substitute substitution and there's techniques that you learn in theater to come up with it so it's believable so he can deliver that he truly is a rapist killer you know so there's so many things when we're actors that we're at challenged to portray and make it believable we've never experienced before but you have to come up with it as an actor that's that's the difference between getting Wes as a, you know, or Gary or Graham. They come up with so much of their own selves to marry with that character, and that's what makes it different. That's what makes that character come alive, is whatever Wes brings to that. Takes those words off that page and brings it alive with he, who he is. And so that's what casting and the directors think about when they're actually looking for the right perfect, perfect person to make their words come to life, to be a part of a story. So, yes. But as always in life, there, there are no absolutes. You know, it just depends on who you're working yeah. with. You know, some people may be just like that word for word. You know, they're sitting there watching you mouthing the words that they wrote or, and or are, are, uh, are part of. But uh, others are looking for spontaneous. They're looking for something a little bit different. It's like uh, I watched Michael Mann one time uh, working with uh, 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 da -da -da -da. from Heat. Uh, uh, Another character from Heat. Uh, <laughs> uh, De Niro? Pacino? Pacino? De Niro? Pacino. Pacino, oh. right? He's working really? with Pacino. <laughs> <laughs> one of those white and, guys. He's, he's working with Pacino. And, and so Al has gone through all of his uh, dialogue. And, uh, and everybody else is still in character on scene. But uh, in any case, there it is. It's all going on. And Mar uh, Michael decides to just stay on him and get even tighter and tighter on, uh, on Al. And see, so he finally says, what do you want? Whoa! You know, like but you just never know what'll happen. You know, it's uh, you have to stay open to uh, to whatever uh, possibilities may be there. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, how how many of you know of the of the series Penny Dreadful? Yeah. Well, you you'll. Uh, uh, I was delighted yesterday to see a message. Uh, from a person that told me there's going to be a sequel to uh, Penny Dreadful called uh, Penny Dreadful City of Angels. Supposedly going to happen in LA. So who knows? That'd be awesome. That, that'd that'd be would be so that awesome. That would be a lot of fun. That's one time, one, one uh, place where I got to play something I'd always, always in my career and even before that, wanted to play a werewolf. I finally got to do it. <laughs> yes. So, so you might be cool, but you'll never be West Studi cool where you forget Pacino's name, huh? <laughs> 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 yeah. Awesome. Okay, so the, I guess this is ready. Okay. The tech is ready. So we could show you a, a little bit of that um, series. Mm. Cursor. Mm. I 
again. Mm -hmm. Oh goodness. Alrighty. We got another malfunction. Is there a Okay, another malfunction. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, let's just put the lights back on. Okay, so we're closing now. They gave us the, the signal that we're, we're at our time limit. So thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Georgina Lynn Lightning. There's another Georgina Lightning on there. That's me, but I don't run that page. So you can, if you want to get in touch with me, it's Georgina Lynn Lightning, okay, with any questions that you have. A lot of people are shy in front of people, but they have questions they want to ask. You're free to ask me any question you want in my inbox, and it'll be confidential, okay? Um, thank you so much to West Duty, our most accomplished achieved actor today. We're going to be selling copies of Older Than America. It's our 10th year uh, anniversary since we worked together making that movie. It came out in 2010 because it traveled the festival circuit and they had to design a whole package to release. But we produced it in 2008. So this is 10 years. It's the first time I'm ever going to sell, I've ever sold uh, movies. So they just shipped it here. I've never sold movies before. So you guys are the first ones that have an opportunity to buy a, a copy. You can get Wes to autograph it. Um, so we'll meet you guys over in the booths wherever we're supposed to be set up. Okay? Thank you so much. Give Wes a great round of applause. Thank you, everyone, and have an awesome day. Thank you, Wes.